DDR5 is still relatively fresh on the scene, but thankfully availability has improved since its launch about half a year ago. And with that improved availability, not only brings the opportunity to actually buy a kit, which is clearly a positive, but you also get some more high-end boutique offerings, like this G-Skill memory that we're looking at today. The Trident Z5 RGB 32GB set that we have here comes with an impressive 6000 MHz operating speed and cast latency of 36. 6 GHz RGB DDR5 from G-Skill? Yeah, that's interesting. Let's take a closer look. G-Skill specs for the Trident Z5 RGB kit that we have here are impressive. This is a DDR5 kit running at 6000 MHz frequency out of the box using XMP 3.0. The operating timings are 36, 36, 36, 96 and that's running 1.35 volts which is pretty lofty for DDR5 memory but probably just tolerable for the Samsung ICs used under the heat spreader. Coming in 32GB capacity, this is a dual channel set that uses two 16GB DIMMs and they are using single rank ICs for the modules. According to CPUZ, those modules are running Samsung ICs, but we couldn't really find out which specific model type of the Samsung ICs it is using, and that's because Typhoon Burner just doesn't play nicely with our Z690 platform and our DDR5 test system. For reference, the actual model code of this Trident Z5 RGB kit is F5000J3636F16GX2-TZ5RS. Yeah, try saying that twice quickly. And I should point out that, as we come to expect from high-end memory, you also get a thermal sensor built in to monitor temperatures through software such as HWinfo. In terms of styling, G-Skill has shifted the design very subtly from the DDR4 era Trident Z RGB memory that we're all used to. Now we get a little more curved flow to the angles of the tri-fin aluminium heat spreader instead of the sharp corners of DDR4 Trident Z. G-Skill sells the modules in matte black or metallic silver colour. We have the silver set which I think contrasts the black naming strip very nicely. I would describe the Trident Z5 RGB overall design as sensible, high quality, and certainly eye-catching. And at around 45mm tall, the height is reasonable, even if you're using some big, beefy air coolers. Lighting is handled by eight RGB LED zones on top of the modules. This light then disperses through a plastic diffuser bar for a smooth and graduated colour gradient. I personally love the Trident Z RGB and Trident Z Royal modules of the DDR4 era, and I think G-Skill does a superb job to make the DDR5 Trident Z5 RGB look just as good, particularly with the smoothness of that LED light diffusion bar. In terms of RGB management, G-Skill offer up their own lighting control software. It's actually reasonably comprehensive and allows individual control of the eight LED zones, and you can select a few different modes and then settings such as speed and brightness. Realistically, you'll probably also want to use motherboard vendor software to sync the RGB memory with your other components in your build, so the software suites from the main four motherboard vendors are supported by G-Skill. Pricing of this 6GHz G-Skill set is certainly hefty, at just a penny under £420 in the UK. That's very expensive for a 2x16 gig set of DDR5 memory. As a comparison, the 5600MHz C36 Dominator Platinum RGB competitor is around 100 to 120 pounds cheaper at 300 to 320 pounds. Other 6000 megahertz kits set you back at least about 380 pounds when looking for a comparably high-end set of modules. So G-Skill is still notably more expensive, but an extra 10% for one premium RAM kit versus another is likely tolerable for this market segment. Anyway, I think that's enough of an overview of the G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB memory that we're looking at today. Let's take a closer look at the test system. Our test system is built around the Core i9-12900K processor and Z690 DDR5 platform, and we also use an RTX 3080 graphics card. We've updated to the most recent BIOS revision on the Asus ROG Strix Z690F gaming Wi-Fi motherboard that we use, plus we've also updated some of the test software and the Windows 11 version so we have a clean set of data on show today. As we have that clean set of data, it means we only really have one DDR5 competitor, that's the only other kit that we have on hand, 
and that is the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB 5200 MHz C36 32 gigabyte set. This kit uses Micron A spec ICs and retails for £320 in the UK, but it is an upmarket kit from Corsair that is a reasonable contender to G-Skills Trident Z5 RGB. As always, if you want more details on the test procedures, the hardware that we're using, the software that we're using, then head on over to the Kikuru page. Let's jump into the test results. Memory bandwidth numbers are significantly higher on the G-Skill kit, thanks to its 6,000 mega transfers per second operating speed. This comes as zero surprise, given that these are simply two dual-channel, single-rank kits that differ by their frequency and timings. Latency is also a strong victory for the Samsung-based G-Skill set, thanks to its higher operating speed whilst maintaining a timings advantage. This is one of the clear indicators of a premium memory kit. The speed is bumped up, but the timings do not suffer in return. Starting out with the real-world tests with Citibench and Blender, we see effectively no difference in the rendering performance output by either memory kit. These tests are clearly more focused on CPU, not memory, grunt. So let's move on to the next set of data. 7-Zip shows a sizable gain for the compression workload on G-Skill's 6GHz Triton Z RGB set. That'll be useful to those who deal with hefty file compressions on a frequent basis. Decompression performance, however, is practically the same on Corsair's slower and cheaper DDR5 compressor. 3 Mark's CPU profile test shows effectively no gain for the 6000 MHz Trident Z5 RGB memory. The CPU scoring section of the Time Spy test is a little faster on G-Skill's higher clock sticks though. Now we're looking at 1080p gaming, we see F1 2020 delivering a small boost in frame rates for the faster G-Skill kit. The performance uptick is minor, particularly at such lofty frame rates already. The 6000 MHz Trident Z5 RGB set is also quicker in Far Cry 5. And this time, the performance increase may be a touch more important given the proximity to 120Hz or 165Hz displays and the frame rate targets for such monitors. Watch Dogs Legion is also a couple of frames per second quicker for G-Skill on both the average and 1% low metrics. Gaming performance is clearly better for G-Skill's 6GHz Trident Z5 RGB set versus 5200 C36 Dominator Platinum RGB, but whether the small differences are actually worth the extra cost is heavily debatable. Running at 1.35 volts for the XMP configuration, we weren't really comfortable pushing higher voltage when trying to test the overclocking capability of the kit. We also wanted to keep the stock timings intact and basically where they were because we think 36 across the board is a very nice, good latency for a premium kit like this. So we didn't really want to back off. As such, we basically had to try and crank up the frequency using the out-of-the-box settings. So it was a bit of a hit and hope to be perfectly honest. This was reasonably successful though because we managed 6200 MHz as the overclocked frequency and that's using the default timings 36, 36, 36 or 1.35 volts. This was reasonably stable in our quick and brief testing. We tried 6400 MHz and that would boot into the OS, but we didn't have full stability, so we weren't happy with that. But 6200 seemed fine. So that's a pretty reasonable result for just cranking the stock settings and upping the frequency a bit. There's certainly a lot to like from the G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB DDR5 memory kit. Out-of-the-box performance is solid in applications that will take advantage of a strong mix between 6000 MHz memory frequency and tight 36, 36, 36 timings. 7-zip file compression is the perfect example there. And gaming performance is also a little improved versus a 5200 MHz C36 competitor. With that said, the uptick in gaming performance that we see is probably not worth the price increase versus an equivalently high-end set of memory, a 32 gig set of memory. So something like that 5200 MHz Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB kit that we also compared is about 100 to 120 pounds cheaper. And for the performance uplift in games that you get from the G-Skill kit, it's really not worth it. Spend that money on a better graphics card. <laughs> Laughs in 2022. I guess what I'm really saying there is that 6 GHz memory with tight timings is expensive, and G-Skill's tight timing 6 GHz kit is particularly expensive at £420 in the UK. With that said, we really cannot argue with the allure of a kit like this. The raw styling is excellent. G-Skill has nailed module design for many years with the Triton Z range, and the Z5 iteration continues that trend. Plus, G-Skill's implementation of the RGB LED light bar really is a superb example of excellent product design. And the control mechanisms through own brand software or motherboard vendor synchronization are positive too. To summarize then, expensive, yes, but well-designed and high performance, 
Yes, also. We can see how the 6GHz G-Skill Triton Z5 RGB 32GB kit will appeal to a lot of Z690 users looking for a particularly premium set of memory. I've been Luke for Kitgroup. Thank you for watching our video review of the G-Skill Triton Z5 RGB memory kit review. Let us know what you think about this memory kit in the comment section down below. Is 6GHz with reasonable time-ins the go-to for you? Or do you just buy a cheaper 5200MHz kit? Or do you go for higher capacity for not much more money? Let us know. If you like what we do here at KitGuru, give us a like and subscribe. It really helps the YouTube channel. Check out the main KitGuru website. That really supports us also. Uh, check us out on Patreon and all the social media channels. Buy a cool t-shirt and check back for the next video review.